a legacy on the brink. For most of the 20th century, the name Evan Rood was more than just a brand. It was a symbol of American innovation on the water. From fishermen in the Great Lakes to speed junkies in the Florida Keys, if you wanted reliable, powerful outboard performance, Evinrude was the name you trusted. Their two-stroke engines were lighter, faster, and simpler than anything the competition had to offer. They defined generations of boating. But by the late 1990s, this legacy stood on shaky ground. Faced with new environmental regulations, corporate debt, and rising foreign competition, Evinrude made a bold and ultimately catastrophic decision. In an attempt to leap ahead of the curve, they rushed to market with a new fuel-injected technology known as Ficht Ram Injection. What followed was not the revolution they promised, but a devastating collapse that would bring the once proud Titan to its knees. Engines exploded, customers panicked, lawsuits poured in, and within a few short years, Evan Rood's parent company went bankrupt. This is the untold truth of how a single engine nearly destroyed a century-old giant. EPA deadlines forced drastic moves. The trouble didn't begin in the engineering lab. It began in the halls of government. By the early 1990s, environmental consciousness had reached a boiling point. The United States Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, backed by bipartisan political support and growing public demand, rolled out new Clean Air Act amendments that would change the landscape of nearly every engine-dependent industry, especially recreational marine. These new regulations zeroed in on the high pollution output of traditional two-stroke outboard motors, the kind of motors Evinrude had built its century-long legacy on. Two-stroke engines, while fast and lightweight, relied on a crude combustion process where oil and fuel were mixed together and burned inside the cylinder, resulting in significant amounts of unburned hydrocarbons being released directly into lakes, rivers, and coastal waters. The blue smoke and oily sheen left behind? That was no longer acceptable. The EPA gave outboard manufacturers a tight timeline. Reduce emissions by more than 75% by 2006, with interim milestones along the way. That meant cleaner combustion, better fuel economy, and less noise, all while maintaining power and reliability on the water. Some companies like Yamaha, Honda, and Mercury had already begun investing in four-stroke technology or had access to well-funded parent corporations with the ability to innovate. These companies took the warning seriously and began long-term development programs to meet EPA targets. But OMC, Outboard Marine Corporation, the parent of Evan Root and Johnson, was in no position to play the long game. Internally, OMC was a sinking ship. OMC, decades of poor financial decisions, bloated management, aging factory infrastructure, and shrinking market share had eroded its dominance. Their once innovative product line now looked dated. Newer, more aggressive competitors from Japan were eating into their sales. The company's debt had piled high and stockholders were getting nervous. They didn't have the luxury of a 10-year R&D roadmap. They needed a solution now, something bold enough to regain technical leadership and compliant enough to survive regulatory review. And then came a spark of hope. Dieter Ficht, a German inventor, had developed a form of direct fuel injection that on paper could make a two-stroke engine clean enough to pass EPA standards while preserving its speed, lightness, and mechanical simplicity. It seemed like the holy grail. Ficht Ram injection, as it was called, promised the benefits of four-stroke emissions levels without the bulk or cost of switching engine platforms. OMC executives pounced on it. They licensed the technology and immediately began adapting it to their existing two-stroke motors before they had properly tested its long-term viability in marine applications. Why? Because the EPA clock was ticking. The company's bank accounts were drying up, dealers were losing faith, and investors were desperate for signs of progress. So instead of taking the time to thoroughly validate, re-engineer, and refine the system across multiple test cycles, OMC made the catastrophic decision to rush the ficht powered outboards to market. They saw it as a necessary gamble to preserve the brand and comply with regulation. A quick fix to a complex problem. 
but history would prove otherwise. What followed wasn't salvation. It was a storm of engineering failures, customer fury, and mechanical disasters that would drag the company into bankruptcy. The very regulations designed to clean the waterways ended up accelerating the downfall of one of the oldest and most iconic names in American marine history. Because when you're unprepared for change, even the right technology can become your worst mistake. Brilliant on paper, broken in reality. On paper, the FH RAM injection system looked like the future. It allowed precise computer-controlled bursts of fuel to be injected directly into the combustion chamber, eliminating the old-style mix of oil and gas and drastically cutting unburnt emissions. It preserved the lightweight benefits of a two-stroke engine while promising near four-stroke cleanliness. The idea was solid, but the execution? Not even close. Evan Rood's engineering teams were forced to, ah, uh, retrofit this revolutionary system onto engine platforms that weren't designed to handle it. The software was buggy. The fuel maps were inconsistent. The combustion chambers experienced irregular pressure spikes. The engines ran too hot, too lean, or too rich. All in the same day, what this meant in real-world terms was terrifying. Engines stalling far from shore, backfires that cracked engine fuel leaking from injectors, fire hazards, and in some cases, full-on explosions. Customers would turn the key expecting a quiet hum. What they got was a ticking time bomb. When the water turned hostile. The backlash was swift, loud, and widespread. Boaters who had trusted Evinrude for decades were now stranded in lakes, rivers, and oceans with dead motors. Some suffered injuries from fires. Many were furious over repeat repairs that never seemed to fix anything. In an industry built on reliability and safety, the Fitched system became infamous. Mechanics hated it. Dealers couldn't sell it. Boating forums lit up with horror stories. Marinas reported unprecedented returns. Evinrude's once loyal customers jumped ship many switching to Yamaha, Honda, and Mercury, who were offering trouble-free four-strokes or more refined injection systems. The damage wasn't just mechanical, it was emotional. People felt betrayed, and that kind of wound doesn't heal easily. Lawsuits and financial bleeding. As the engines failed, the lawsuits began. Customers sued for injuries, property damage, and fraud. Dealerships filed lawsuits over broken contracts and unsellable inventory. Mechanics began refusing to work on Fitch engines altogether, citing the risk of injury and the lack of reliable parts. OMC was hemorrhaging money, not just from legal fees and warranty claims, but from massive recalls, retrofits, and damage control efforts that couldn't stem the tide. In 1999, OMC attempted a redesign they released a Gen 2 Fitched engine with improvements in software and fuel delivery. It was better, but by then the Fitch name had become radioactive. Nobody wanted it. OMC files for bankruptcy. By the end of 2000, the storm became too much. OMC, once the largest manufacturer of outboard motors in the world, filed for bankruptcy. Thousands of jobs vanished, plants closed, shareholders lost everything. The company's assets were up for grabs, and the name Evinrude was now damaged goods. The legacy built over nearly a hundred years had been dragged down by a single rushed innovation that wasn't ready for the real world. E-Tech rises from the ashes. In 2001, Bombardier Recreational Products, BRP, best known for Ski-Doo and Sea-Doo, swooped in and bought the remains of OMC, but they didn't give up on Fitch technology. Instead, they re-engineered it from the ground up, rebranding the new system as Evinrude Tech. This time, the engine worked. E-Tech engines were reliable, efficient, clean burning, and powerful. They won engineering awards, earned the EPA's cleanest rating, and restored faith among some voters. For a moment, it looked like Evinrude might reclaim its glory. Yamaha and Mercury had secured massive portions of global sales. Four-stroke technology became the new standard. And Evinrude, despite its resurgence, was always fighting uphill. A name that never fully recovered. Even with E-Tech's success, 
Evan Rude never fully escaped the shadow of Ficht. Many dealers were still burned from the late 90s disaster. Some refused to carry the brand again. Customers remained cautious. And while E-Tech had fans, it never regained the widespread market dominance Evan Rude once enjoyed. By 2220s, BRP made the difficult decision to discontinue the entire Evan Rude outboard line, officially ending production after 113 years. They cited shifting market focus and a desire to partner with Mercury for powertrains. But industry insiders knew the truth. Evan Rude never truly recovered from Ficht. Some whisper it like a curse, others remember it as a lesson. Because in the world of engines, you only get one chance to make a first impression. And for Evan Rude, the Ficht was the mistake that not only shattered that first impression, it marked the beginning of the end. If you found this interesting, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe for more wallet-saving tips, and drop a comment telling us your thoughts.